Green, long uphill and then downhill stretch into the Chrysler that ends the run. And 270 degrees later, rattle off the wall to the finish line. 51.91, came down in 51.03 in the first heat. And as you said, Liz, 5.11 first start, 5.29 second start. And that will be the effect of the wind blowing up the start ramp at the athletes. Yeah, we'll be able to see with the next few athletes coming to see if that's what it was. This was a really abrupt transition here into 14, really tossing that brakeman around in the back of the sled, which makes getting off of 14 so, so difficult just because your height in the quarters at a different place than it would normally be. He ends up having to fight the sled a little bit as he's in this big straightaway heading to big corner 15, which is another high pressure corner for these athletes. In this little bit of an uphill section, he puts himself into quite a skid, and it's really hard to bring it back online. Well, there's Matty with the helmet on, and Dalibor, his brakeman. Their World Cup season is done, brief as it was. It's only their second World Cup race. For Adam Debesh, his first full season in World Cup as well. And a change of brakeman today, Andre Radzil behind him. So Debesh yesterday, 13th and last after the first heat, dragged himself up by his bootstraps into a 10th place finish with Dominic Zaleski behind him. And so now let's see what they can produce here. Had a slender advantage over their teammates from the first heat and they need to keep that alive. First start was a 5 0 7. You can see the shades flapping in the background. 5 11, so 11. closer. Definitely much closer start there. Ah, oh, late tap there as he enters into corner two. Now down at ground level here as you get into the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven labyrinth. Most corners, uh, uh, most labyrinths are sort of three corner complex or maybe a four corner complex. Here basically they've got two nailed together. The transitions are so abrupt here for the bobsleds. They look so aggressive. 5,900s up, better speed, 111.5, 69.3 miles an hour. And at the bottom, 75 and a half miles an hour. Across the line, nice and smoothly, 51.44 for Adam Dobesh. And that brings his World Cup season to a close. Yesterday in 10th place, he is the leader with 11 to go. And a crowd responding to all of the athletes here. Definitely, the Latvian fans are fans of sliding, so they're going to be cheering everyone on today. Into 11 here, he breaks into a little bit of a skid in the middle of the corner, just steering it a bit too heavy. Most athletes are taking this tap between 11 to 12. It just sets them up a little bit nicer for 12, and a little bit less steering necessary to do in 12. But that's a pretty aggressive transition there. You can really see the runners, the bits of metal that are touching the ice, it's having to steer super hard into this straightaway, trying to bring that sled back online, just kissing that left wall. <laughs> and kissing a few babies on the way as well. High five yeah. in the crowd. Adam Debesh is into the leader's box as we get to the first of our, hang on a minute. Uh, I'm sure I can hear a crowd. Yeah, first of our Latvian sleds, Jakobs Kalender. And behind him, Arnis Debris. Arnis in his sixth two-man World Cup race. Jakobs the driver in only his fifth World Cup start in the two-man. Yesterday, his best ever World Cup result. He finished in ninth place. And today, hovering around just outside the top ten. He, like Adam Devesh, would love to pick up a spot or two. 5.02, just a hundred slower than that first heat. So Perhaps the group hasn't slowed down too much. Yeah, maybe that uh, 529 Whee! start for our first sled was just the two of them not quite getting the start right. Took that aggressive tap two to three, but looks to be bringing it back now. Yeah, building his advantage. 26 to 37 to 4300. But as long as he doesn't have too much of a skid, it won't harm the speed overly. Oh, come back, baby. Oh. Trying to get it straight into front wow. And he's going to skid into the Chrysler. Down in the gutter as he comes in, sends Oi. him straight up to the roof. And a 51 10 slide. He takes the lead away from the Czech Republic duo.
<laughs> Loving the excitement of this crowd. Definitely. It's so awesome to have the crowd back out here. Picks up the sled as he goes to push. Just shows the power in that brake athlete yeah. when they hop. And when they hit the sled on the start, it is sometimes common for the sled to lift out of the grooves. That takes a little bit of energy out of the sled. Then here we see in big 11. He just gets hung up on the corner and big skid as he heads into corner 12. There's Jacobs Kalender on the left-hand side, Arnie Stebris on the right-hand side as they head into the leader's box with 10 to go here in Sigulda. Latvia lead, and next up is Italy's Patrick Baumgartner and Robert Messier. One of two pairings only that remains intact from yesterday. Almost everybody else using two different brakemen over the two days for maximum fitness and to keep everybody as sharp as they can. Well, yesterday finished in a World Cup best tying seventh place. His two best results have both come on this Segulda track, five seasons apart. 5-10 getaway, and they started 5-10 in the first heat. Nice and smooth as he enters into corner two. Double tap into four at the beginning of this labyrinth. Whips out a sixth into the next sequence of corners, seven, eight, nine. And then big corner 10 awaits. Growing his advantage a little bit. Yeah, he's not creeping away by much, is he? 1300s in front when he sat down, out to 14, out to 15, out to 19. Best speed of all. He will be in the top 10. So far, like Kalenda, like Dobesh, not quite as good as yesterday, but a 50.93 run gets him down. It is another top 10 result. It's been an improved season for Patrick yes. Baumgartner. All right, this is only his third World Cup two-man race. But he finished in eighth place in Altenburg, seventh yesterday, tenth today. A season ago, he would have given his eye teeth for three consecutive top 10 finishes. This is that 13 to 14 transition, just a little bit too much height on the exit of 13. So the sled has to fight a lot in 14. You're going to see him flop on the exit here. You don't see the runner steering too much when he's coming off the curve, so he's just accepted that's what's going to happen. Nice down the straightaway as he heads to 15, probably the nicest we've seen so far. As he goes uphill here, he's just fighting that right wall, puts him into a small skid as he heads into the big finish curve, Kreisel. There's Patrick on the right-hand side. And Robert Messier, his brake man. They head into the leader's box. We have nine sleds to go in the season. And the first of those is Cedric Follador and Nicola Mariani for Switzerland. Seventh World Cup race of his career for Cedric. And yesterday, only his second race on this track. Nicola, only his fourth two-man World Cup start. He's done more in four-man. 11th place yesterday. This, if he holds on, will be an improvement for Cedric Follador. 5.15 drops behind right from the start. Definitely. As he was pushing, it did look like a lot of snow was starting to build up in those grooves there. And there's snow sitting in the track at the top. You can see it quite clearly. And it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. He's got to start bringing it back here. Laps out to 1100s. Whoa! Oy. Very late, Follador. Hanging in there, 1200s back. Hassan got the speed that we saw from Baumgartner, who was quickest all the way down, apart from the start. Not going to get him. Follador is going to slip one. He does. Drops back. So Patrick Baumgartner stays in the leader's box. And Cedric Follador, 11th place yesterday, may well up end up in 11th place today. Gonna see him as he goes into 13 here. Just misses the steer a little bit, and the sled has so much height and a bit of a skid. 
But then the pressure gets built so much later in the corner that when he heads into 14, it's really this aggressive jump almost onto the curve. Yeah, the stage throwing you to your right out of 13 and then 14's heading off to your left and yeah, you end up basically in the wall rather than on the corner. Patrick Baumgartner leads from Cedric for Folador and Jakobs Kalander with nine to go. Eight sleds to go in the final race of the season because I can't subtract live on air. Marcus Trichel with Marcus Samba behind him, the venerable old man no disrespect of Swiss bobsledding, Marcus Sammer, the veteran who's been around the block more times than most people have had hot dinners. 34 years of age and still as fast as ever. Bronze here in January 2022 in the two-man race with Benny Meyer. Let's see if they can move themselves a little up the order. Try in eighth place after the first heat with 1,700s in the bank as he sits down. 498, another strong start. Anything sub five in this weather is very good starting here. That tap three to four, every single athlete's gonna be taking that today. Growing his advantage. Ooh, a little late. Hey. Hey. off 14. Just dragged along the wall there, second best speed. Nice out of 15, goes straight into Kreisel. That helps keep the speed on board. So it looks like third best speed, but it's a good run. 2800s up, 50.70 for Marcus Trichel. Now Marcus crashed out in the second run yesterday, went straight up into the woodwork. And basically in those, the sled just got bounced off the ice on the way down. And he just ran out of room to sort it all out. They finished the race. I'm glad to see that Marcus is here. It was Sasha Stefan there at the front of the sled who was in with Marcus yesterday. So both of them are fine. Really loopy here in corner 11. Just a bit too much height on that first pressure. And then it pushes too much height to the end of the curve, which gives him quite an aggressive tap as he heads into 12. This is that 13 to 14 transition. Really just having a very aggressive transition there for him. And then this is into that big straightaway before 15, just hauling it off. And it's hard here because the transitions are so quick. You get off one, it's hard to get back on. Big smile from Marcus Dreichel, the end of his best season in bobsled. And we get into the closing stages of the season with our final Latvian slider. Emil Tsipoulis, well, there's no question at all that his world championship medal will be the big highlight of his season. With a chance to race at home, always to be relished for the Latvians. Ekes Nemo back in behind him. Suffered a big burn in Winterberg in a crash. Came back for the Worlds. Don't ever tell me that bobsledders aren't made of stern stuff. Five flat, good getaway. Oh, big bump there on the sliders right before. This hasn't always been a happy track for Latvian sliders. It's not always been the kindest to them. The only two winners in two man, or the only two wins in two man, came back to back from Oscar's Cuba Manis, dominated in the 1920 season. Pretty good looking run by Sipulis here. Yep. Not enough speed on board though. He's gone from 100th back to 2100th back and he's in danger of falling behind Patrick Baumgartner. He brings it back at the line for second, but Marcus Trichel and Marcus Sammer stay in the leader's box. 50.85 run for Emil Sipulis compared to 50.52 in the first heat. Nobody's been as quick in the second heat. I think he may feel that that was a lost opportunity to nail one on in front of Trichel and aim for a top six. Coming out of corner one here, he's doing a lot of driving and get pulled in that snowbank and takes a double bump really early on before he heads into corner two. 
out of 14 here. He's on the corner quite long. He gets a bit of a flop with those back runners and keeps it nice and straight as he heads into big 15. <sighs> Six legs remain in our race. Marcus Tricol, the leader. And Tricol's previous best on this track, a 10th place. He's just blown that out of the water quite comfortably. Now then, this could be another big run for Li Chunjian of China. 15th World Cup start for the driver, third for his brakeman, Shen Heng, and a first since Altenburg. Second time here for Li. He was 17th and 15th in the last two races he had here. And yesterday was in eighth place. Today, sixth after the first heat. And with a great chance to move up. And watch these guys at the start. 497 first heat. And they get in five flat. These teams have made such an improvement on their starts this season. And their driving has come on really strongly yep. as well. Both the men and the women and their skeleton sliders are improving fast as well. Uh, helped here by their coach's knowledge of the track, Yanis Minins is, of course, a Latvian, grew up here. So he's just imparting all the little tricks. Wee, a little bit of a tap there before he enters into 13. Exit of 14, comes out pretty straight. Best speed of all from the Chinese sled. Now, it's not a sled built in China. It's a BTC built here in Latvia, like so many athletes use. Second best speed. He'll lead at the line. Top six finish, 50.67. <laughs> There's been a lot of that, hasn't there? There's been a lot of that this weekend. Lots for the Chinese coaches to shout about. And lots for the athletes to shout about as well. Yin Ching like taking a first monobob medal yesterday. Some really standout performances. Definitely. These, this Chinese team is really coming on strong, especially after the Beijing Olympics. They're here to fight. He's that stoked about a top six. I'm sure we're going to see some medal, medals coming in the next couple of seasons, and they're going to be a team to watch out for. Yeah. Couple small mistakes here, but overall a very nice drive. Really nice and high in 15 as well. He's feeling no pressure, is he? Just enjoying life right now. And that's the best way to go about it. Five to go. Now we get into the medals, Hunt, because this was a very tight battle for the silverware. Johannes Lochner, 1700s ahead, 1600s ahead of the rest of the field. But between the four sleds behind him, next to nothing. And a good clean run here from Brad Hall and Greg Cackett could easily put them in the medals. Two silvers last time out, one with Greg, one with Nick Gleason here. Let's see what they've got. 493, that's where they want to be. You can see that sled get pulled a little bit in that snowbank. Well, they had a 490 and a 5 yesterday with Taylor Lawrence. Two 493s with Greg Cackett and Brad Hall. And he's got to build a big advantage here over Lee Chun Jan. Four tenths ahead when he sat down. 4500s up now. Best speed from Brad Hall. Smooth looking run by Brad right now. He's had a great season in two-man and four-man. He's been in the medal swinging, third place in the overall four-man standings, looking for third in the overalls in two-man as well. And across the line, a 50.25 run. And that is just 1,100 slower than their first. That is a good run. That is consistency. That was a great run, especially the track has slowed down significantly. They were able to match their starts, just shows the strength of that team of Hackett and Hall together. Yep. And a much better drive by Brad. Yes, I think that just tidied up as many of the errors as you can expect in one heat. Again, 13 yep. to 14, a smoother take on to 14 than yeah. the number we've seen, and as a result, not having too much of a drama coming on the exit. Definitely a small little skid there. You saw the runners go to up left and right. That's Brad bringing it back to trying to bring it straight as he heads into 15. All right. Hey. Hello, everyone at home. 
<laughs> All right, four to go. We are in the serious end of this final race of the season here in Segulda. Mickey Vogt, can he grab another medal? He's had a silver and two bronzes so far this season. Brad Hall with three silvers and one bronze. Will either of them get a medal? Because this is the fourth from last sled. Brad Hall leads, Mickey Vogt chases. Five flat for the Brits, 4.93 wow. for the Swiss. That's a great getaway. That's the push they need to try and fight for that medal. Sorry, it's 4.93 for the Brits, 4.93 for the Swiss, so they remain on as even. Just six hundreds between them after the first heat. Now that's out to nine hundreds in favour of Mickey Vogt. 14 hundreds ahead now. Yeah, a fraction more speed than Brad Hall. Whoa, very late. Very late, 13 to 14, as he was in the first heat. Second speed now. The speed has gone away. The gap is shrinking. Skids on the hill, up to 16. This is going to be close at the line. I think he's got it. He does have it. Five ah, point two six run. All right. Well, they found an extra 300 yeah. somewhere at the start. There's Greg, K Greg Kakit shouting his congratulations to Sandro Mikkel. A lot of respect among this fraternity of push athletes. Yes, the drivers, so get, the drivers get all the glory because it's their name in lights at the front, but the push athletes, they're the motive power to these sleds. This is that 13 to 14 transition. He really hangs it off of 13 as he goes into 14. You can see the articulation of the front bit of the sled having to work a lot. And then this is into that long straightaway. You can see the results of that transition. It's just so much pressure left in the sled puts him into a bit of a skid as he heads uphill. Yeah, Mickey Vogt, not sure whether that is enough for a medal. I'm not sure either. 500 to cover the top two, three to go in Sigulda. Here we go. Three German sleds filling the podium as of now. Tied for the silver medal position. Adam Amor and Isam Amor and Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Margis. Because the Amors went first and set the time that Friedrich then tied, Friedrich is first off to try and beat them. 4 9 Four, zero nine. start for Friedrich and Torsten Margis. Another big getaway from Big Torsten. I feel like Friedrich and Torsten have a second gear when they're fighting from behind. Well, Friedrich has a second gear, doesn't he? he just, the more pressure he's under, the better he is. He just Definitely. loves it, soaks it up and responds. Okay, speed is good, but the gaps come down over Mickey Vogt from 1200s to 1000s. Whee! 800s, oh. third best speed, not as quick as Hall, not as quick as Vogt. Tucked his head down, look in the straight, Friedrich has all the tricks, he's not looking to steer across the line by 800s of a second. That is insane, Francesco Friedrich. He buried his head out of 15, he was not looking. It's we'll like he knew he needed replay. every bit. That is remarkable knowledge of where he is and what's going on around him. And that's why he is such a great driver. Definitely. Here's this 13 to 14 transition. Really scraping a lot of ice as he enters into 14. Now, this is what now you were talking about, Mark. Look. He's yeah, not, he, he cannot see out over the cow. He's not looking. He knows no. it's going straight into 16. And when it does, he doesn't look then either. He's France, like, come on, no hands. You nutter. Yeah. Hey, listen. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> That's eight hundreds of a second lead. That may make the difference between being second and third or third and fourth. So, moment of truth for Adam and Isam Amor, the two brothers. Driver Adam, 21 years old. His brakeman brother, Isam, is 29 years old. More experienced, slightly. This is a World Cup debut for them as a pair. Adam's the junior world champion in two-man, silver medalist in four-man. This is only his eighth two-man race. 
So he's done six Europe Cups, Junior Worlds, five Euro, five Euro Cups, Junior Worlds, World Championships, and now makes his World Cup debut in his eighth race of his career. I mean, talk about a prodigious young talent. Crazy and they strong are fast, 486 in the first, 489 in the second. They are also quite small in stature relatively, so they're pushing a heavy sled as well. Well, they're not tall. They are definitely not yes. narrow. <laughs> I was having true. breakfast in the hotel with the Germans. They are enormous. <laughs> they're, they're Sun Ying Bing, Sun, Sun Yun Bun. Uh, they're Yun size. I mean, they're as broad as they are tall, nearly. Adam Amore in the hole by 1300, so. The lead is only 800s. Friedrich to vote. So this is going to drop him back to Brad Hall or behind. He's just creeping ahead of Brad Hall for third at the line. It is third at the line, tied with Brad Hall. <laughs> Friedrich leads from Vogt and then Amor and Hall. Well, yesterday, Max Ilman rounded out the podium for Germany with a third place finish and a bronze medal. That is still a great debut for Adam and Isam Amor. There is Max offering his congratulations. I mean, both these is. young drivers this, have just grabbed the opportunity yeah. with both hands. As they should do. I mean, the German team has so much depth, and although he doesn't have so many races under his belt, he is fantastic feeling behind the D-rings, yeah. really a great pilot and a very strong push athlete. It's his eighth two-man race in total. Francesco yeah, Friedrich crazy. started his 91st two-man World Cup race, never mind all the other stuff he's done, Europe Cup and World Championships and two Olympics and all the others. And finally then, it is Francesco Friedrich and Georg Fleischhauer, yesterday's winners, unbeaten together, I'll say that again, unbeaten together, Lake Platted, victory, Winterberg, victory, Altenburg, one, victory, Altenburg, two, victory, Sigulda, victory, oh, and in between, World Championship San Moritz, victory. <laughs> Since Lake Placid, in early December, they have ruled the two-man roost. And again, Flyscar gets in with a 486, like there is a trap door in the bottom of the sled. He just falls in there. Such a strong start by this team. Fastest start in the first heat, fastest start in the second heat. Rocks it hard onto corner six. But Johannes Lochner has a 16 hundredths of a second advantage over Francesco Friedrich and is starting to ease away. Got to put down some nice lines here at the bottom of the track to stay ahead of Friedrich. Perfect out of 14. Doesn't bother ducking his head. Whoa. Out of 15, big height, but big speed. It is going to be gold. It is going to be a second win here. It is seven in a row for Francesco wow. Friedrich and Michael Fleischhauer. And with that goes the two-man World Cup season. He is the two-man king for 22-23. Johannes Lochner and Georg Fleischhauer are totally <laughs> unbeatable in the two-man. Super, really a great season for Lochner and Fleischauer, just putting the pressure on Friedrich. And as ever, the first to congratulate are Franz and Torsten. And it is genuine. They're not putting on smiles yeah. for the cameras. It is absolutely genuine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, early in the season, talk to Johannes when he was off the podium or in second place, and he said, but, you know, we're used to coming second to France. That's the way it is. That ain't the way it is anymore. No. Such a strong weekend for Lochner and Fleischhauer. Such a strong season. Really great to see them come on this year. This is like Michael Schumacher's teammate beating him in Formula One. This is like Lewis Hamilton's yep. teammate taking the title away. It does happen. 
It can happen. It has happened. Johannes Lochner and Georg Fleischhauer take their second straight victory in Segulda, their seventh in a row. Francesco Fujic, Torsten Margis, the silver. Mickey Vogt and Sandro Mikkel round out their season with the bronze. Ahead of Adam and Issa Mamour with, Greg Hall, uh, with Brad Hall and Greg Kackett. Ahead of Lee Chun Chan and Yen Shen. And uh, a fantastic end to the season here in Segulda. As ever, exciting racing. This track really just makes it hard for the drivers. It makes it dramatic. It makes it flamboyant. And Johannes Lochner made the very best of it. Well, there you go. The overall Cheers. World Prost Cup to champion. A great season. Yeah. Now, I don't, that is that the combined title? He is the two man World Cup champion. He finished second in the four man standings to Francesco Friedrich. So it kind of depends who got the better points haul for second and first in each of them. And with his sixth World Cup win in two-man, I'm tending to think that Johannes might just also have sneaked the combined title. He is our two-man World Cup champion. Francesco Friedrich will take the silver Crystal Globe and Brad Hall the bronze. Brad also in third place behind the same two drivers in the other order in the four-man category. Mickey Vogt, Marcus Tricol. Marcus Tricol, fifth overall in the World Cup season. What a great year he's had. And can't say enough, too, about the progress we've seen from some of the young drivers and also from our Chinese sliders. They have been very impressive this season. And it's just a mouth-watering entree, really, because we have three more seasons building up the pressure into the next Winter Games in Milano Cortina. And that will bring more teams, more drivers, more athletes, more pressure, more competition, and more excitement for you, me, and them. And that is it for the entire season. On behalf of Liz Meyer and everybody else, Greg Cackett and the rest who have joined me in the booth throughout the year, thank you so much to them. And thank you most of all to you for joining us. Without you, without the athletes, there are none of us. From the IBS TV crew, I'm Martin Hayden saying thank you for joining us. Well done, everybody. It's been a fantastic season. We look forward already to the next one. It cannot start soon enough. <laughs>